I have been running through Helldive difficulty in Helldivers 2 against the bugs and the automatons both solo and with random teams, and this video should make doing that pretty easy. I don't care how many hours you put into this game, there is at least something here that'll benefit you. But don't forget to leave your tips and tricks down in the comments. Once anyone on your team has hit like page 7 I think on the Helldivers Mobilize Warbond, the stamina booster is the number one must have booster that you should be using. This is probably the most drastic change a booster makes in the game, and it's with stamina which is obviously incredibly useful. Someone on your team should be using this, mostly because it's extremely useful at avoiding enemies. And that's the second thing I really need to say is stop shooting everything you see. Please man. I barely played the first Helldivers game so I came into Helldivers 2 thinking that I could just run my way through by shooting every enemy I see too, but you do not need to do that and it's actually way easier and a lot more efficient if you don't. Enemies do not give you any XP, they do not give you anything, other than the little leaderboard lobby thing at the end of the game. When you do get a group of enemies on you that are roaming the map, you can usually just run around them. Sometimes you'll sort of see them peek up like they saw you, but you can still most of the time run away. They don't really see you unless you get really close or shoot or throw an airstrike. And even if they do see you, you can still usually run away. Like unless you're running in heavy armor, there should really be no reason that you can't escape these guys. Sometimes like the medium sized enemies or the stalkers will catch up to you, obviously shoot them, but keep on running. Don't sit there and have like a 30 minute battle with them and lose 3 lives. You don't really need to shoot an enemy unless they are pushing you at an objective or you're pushing them at an objective, and they've actually been alerted. If you see groups of enemies like roaming the map, shoot the little and medium sized guys before they call in for backup. But to do that, you need to be accurate or have something that does a lot of damage very quickly so that you can take everyone out. There's really no point though, just don't shoot them. In Helldive difficulty and like everything from level 7 to 9, starting a fight at minimum is going to get a Bile Titan on you. Probably a couple of them. For killing a Bile Titan, you don't get anything special. It doesn't even say on the leaderboard that you killed like a big enemy. Now obviously, you do have to fight people some of the time, and for their weak spots, for the most part, it sums up to just aiming at their limbs or their head. Even if they're armored, aiming at a specific limb is going to let you strip that armor. The only exceptions are like the Hulk automaton, where you can shoot his back to take him straight out, but his head is still a great weak spot to aim for. The Railgun one shot him to the head. The auto cannon takes two to four shots. It's kind of hard to tell because I'm not the most accurate with this thing, but I swear I've taken him out in two. One shot directly to the eye seems to cause him to start on fire, and then the next should kill him. I tend to just keep shooting him at the eye until he dies. The bile titan can be pretty annoying at first until you hit like level 20 or are lucky enough to find a railgun lying across the map. I don't even think you can find those anymore, but it takes this guy out with a couple of headshots. Like literally two. But if you're doing a bile titan mission before anyone has unlocked the railgun, gun, you should probably have someone running the Brequailless launcher, and whoever's reloading maybe carry an expendable launcher, cause that drops two of those, and in between the Recoilless and the expendable, the Bile Titan should go down pretty easy. Headshots are the best spot to aim for, and only takes a couple of rockets if you can be accurate enough to continuously hit him in the head, so at that point you won't even need multiple rocket launchers. But you could also aim at the same spot in his armor over and over again, and take him out that way. If you need anything else, you could also use the Rocket Sentry, Laser Orbital, or 500 kg bomb. Using the 500 kg bomb is pretty easy once you learn what to do, which is have the Bile Titan chase you, throw the airstrike sort of directly in front of him, and then get in close to him to bait his attack. When it attacks, it freezes in place and you can dive out of the way. As long as you're not right on top of him, the bomb won't hurt you since the blast radius is pretty small. But the absolute best airstrike to take out there, once you're I think level 20, is the Orbital Rail Cannon, which has an instant call in time and no explosion. Plus, I mean, it's extremely easy to use since it just locks onto them. Or you can do like me and just hell dive straight through it, which surprisingly enough, you have to do multiple times. One of them doesn't kill him, which doesn't make a lot of sense since you're a gigantic pod going through it. But I mean, if the Bile Titan kills you, you should accept your fate as a martyr for democracy and let your teammate just throw you into him. So the best things to take the Bile Titan out, Railgun, and Orbital Cannon. More early to mid game would be the Rocket Launchers, a couple of Orbital Precision Strikes, or the 500 kilogram Bomb. Chargers can be pretty time consuming early game and you'll spend a lot of ammo if you don't have a strategy to take them out. And there are quite a few different ones that you can use. For one, you can use the Railgun, put it in unsafe mode, and charge up a shot to hit it in the head. I think three shots by the way, so headshots take longer to kill the Charger than the Bile Titan. Or a lot easier and more consistent way is to use just two shots to the legs to 
strip its armor so that you can shoot it with any weapon to take them out quickly, or once that armor is stripped, just one more shot with the railgun. But you don't necessarily need a railgun. You can also use the auto cannon, the recoilless rifle, or the expendable anti-tank, which is unlocked pretty early. Do not shoot it on the back, otherwise it ricochets off. You want to shoot the legs. Early game though, I mostly just used orbital precision strikes whenever he would freeze in place or right before he hit something. Impact grenades though, if you throw them in front of him, also usually stop his charge. So you might be able to kind of use those to benefit you freezing him in place before the airstrike hits. And if you're using something that ricochets off, you want to aim the auto cannon sort of at the back of their leg, and if you take a couple of shots, at least most of them will not ricochet. Sometimes they still do, but you can definitely kill a charger with these. Stalkers can be annoying, and at the same time, easy to kill. In my last video, I complained about not knowing what was going on because I had been running through level 9 difficulty completely fine, then I went down to level 7 difficulty because I couldn't really find a match at level 9, and my random teams were getting wiped by the stalkers for a couple games in a row. It turns out, both of those matches, we landed right between three stalker nests. Obviously, once we took those nests out, they stopped coming, but if you get a bad landing, doing that can be crazy difficult, trying to get a chance to grab your gear before they one or two tap you. So yeah, take out the nests right away so they stop coming. That should be like your main thing if you see stalkers, there's a nest nearby. Plus, those nests give you more XP, like a lot more than any regular old nest does. I don't even really bother taking out regular nests. Until you've done that, just keep looking around you until they're taken out so they don't sneak up on you. Their weak spots are their limbs, just like every other bug, but the best place to aim, if you can, if you can be accurate, is their head. More specifically, like their mouth. It's a pretty small spot, but using the breaker shotgun makes it pretty easy, since it shoots super quickly and one-shots them in that spot. I mean, the breaker shotgun's like the best weapon regardless. The hardest enemy, since the only weak spot is on its back, and it's pretty good at guarding it, is the tank. Now, if it's in close, you could obviously have two players running in opposite directions so that it aims at one of them while the other shoots it in the back, but that takes a lot of coordination, or I mean, just a teammate that sees it aiming at someone else and flanks it, but most of the time there are a ton of enemies around and that's kind of hard to do. Defensive missions are easy because multiple people running the rocket sentry mixed with every other mortar sentry should make it so that the tanks, or really any other enemy for that matter, can't even get up to you. But for the most part, you want hard-hitting airstrikes. The 500 kilogram bomb or the rail cannon orbital are the top two. Rail cannon is obviously the best. The rocket pods, I think they're the 110 millimeter rocket pods, those will also one-shot the tank and they're really good. Something I haven't heard anyone saying is how absolutely insane the impact grenades are against automatons. You can take out a tank by chucking a few of these towards the top of it, obviously even faster if you hit it from the back and blow it out that way. You can knock out a group of AT-ATs with just one of these. With the red CE-74 breaker light armor, you can hold six grenades and I have run out of ammo and saved myself with these impact grenades so many times. Other ways to get rid of the AT-AT -AT enemies in automaton territory is the anti-material rifle, takes them out in just a couple of shots, the auto cannon is a one shot, or just using a regular old weapon to tap them in the head, which barely peeks out from the top or shooting them off of the back of it are other good ways to take them out. For the acid spitting bugs, the anti-material rifle is also insanely good for taking them out with headshots since you can do it from across the map. Even without headshots, it takes only like three shots. Those guys really only give you trouble at the beginning of the game though. Same with really any automaton, the anti-material rifle is is really good early on. I mean, even mid to late game, you can stick to this if you wanted to. Again, with the acid guys though, you can take them out with a single railgun shot, and the auto cannon is like two or three shots. You are 100% safe from them until they stop in place. Once they stop, that means they're gonna spit at you, and you should immediately dive. I mentioned the expendable rocket, but I think a lot of people sleep on how insanely good this thing can be, especially before you've unlocked some of those later weapons. Yeah, it only has one rocket, but it drops two launchers, so you can run this plus another support weapon, or have a higher level teammate bring you a weapon, and call in the expendable whenever you need it. A lot of people that I've played with don't even consider dropping one of their weapons again once they already have it, but if you're playing random lobbies, whenever your weapon stratagem or something like the shield that you're not going to call in again for yourself since you already have one, throw it down every time you get it in case someone wants to use it, especially if you're playing with lower level people. Just help your teammates out. Right now I've unlocked just about everything, almost have all of the trophies, so I just go around to lower level missions and help lower level people pass their missions, and it's a lot of fun. Plus, you're still contributing to spreading democracy across the map this way. For smaller enemies, and I mean smaller as in 
anything that isn't a giant tank. One of the best weapons is the grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is absolutely insane and just quickly destroys anything nearby. The arc thrower is good for like early game. I really liked this weapon for a while, but the amount of time that it takes to charge each shot just doesn't really make it worth it in end game. Plus, you can just chain a shot onto a teammate on accident. If a teammate's near an enemy that you are somewhat shooting near, it'll kill them. The grenade launcher is also the number one weapon that I use for any mission where the objective is to destroy something, at least in bug territory. It's not going to do you a whole lot of good in the automaton missions, but for bugs where you're destroying nests, spore spewers, eggs, this weapon is great. I push through those types of missions so low on Helldive difficulty in under 10 minutes easily. Same with the auto cannon. It's really good for taking out spore spewers. You can basically snipe them shut if you wanted to from across the map. Same with bug nests, except you have obviously have to take up the backpack slot if you don't have a teammate reloading for you. Both of those are like my favorite stratagem weapons because they are good for just about any possible scenario and are crazy strong. Yeah, I know it's not as strong as the railgun. Everyone loves the railgun. I love it too. It's insanely powerful, but it's not the best possible weapon for every single scenario out there. The HMG emplacement is also an extremely slept on stratagem, especially for defense missions. And always, when I am using that thing, I have the most kills in the game. And I'm not saying that because I'm insanely good at the game, if anything, I'm pretty average, but the HMG emplacement is just insane for these. If you have at least some of these sentries unlocked, you can play at least at level 7 difficulty for the defense missions, if not Helldive, no matter what level you are, and get 1000 XP per match right now in just a couple of minutes. Right now, the best possible armor is the light armor. The best one that you can get for free, and I think the only one, is on page 7 of the Helldivers Mobilized Warbond. It has the fastest speed stat. I mean, a lot of these are tied for the fastest. This one isn't any better than some of the others, but it's the fastest one that you can get for free. If you're watching this later on, there's probably another Warbond with light armor, and maybe heavy armor will be working by then, and might actually replace light armor as the best. But I don't really see that happening. I mean, at least if you have this playstyle of running all the time. If you want to be an absolute tank, maybe they'll eventually fix it, and heavy armor will be the best. 